Hello, my name is Sarah Wood, and today I will be speaking about the host pathogen and environmental determinants of European foul brood disease. I am from the University of Saskatchewan, Western College of Veterinary Medicine, and I'm here representing a large group of researchers listed. Hello, my name is Sarah here Wood. That and have, uh, today I will be speaking on about this the host pathogen and, uh, and environmental and proud to represent them. Foul brood today. disease. I am I'd like from to start the University off my presentation Western College by, of Veterinary uh, Medicine. Few people. And I'm here so representing specifically I'd like a to large group Dr. Jerry Bromenshank, Jalen Naylor, here, Dr. Cameron Jack, and Dr. Uh, Matt Hart Nasser on this for research. their contributions and, uh, to happy this evening's meeting and for them inviting today. me to join. As well, I'd like to thank I'd like the to Western start Ethical off my presentation Society in North America, by, uh, for thanking on people this event. So, and I'd specifically, like to I'd like all to of the attendees Dr. for Jerry Bromenshank, Jaylene Naylor, Dr. As well, Jack, and I'd Dr. like to thank my Matt Nasser for their contributions and research to team this evening's meeting. I uh, work for with inviting me to join. Tremendous group as well. I'd like to thank the Western and, uh, Ethical they are Society of North America after a on sweaty day of this event. honey extraction. And I'd like to thank so, all of the attendees uh, for joining us this evening uh, to belong to this team. As well, I'd like to thank and for my those of you that don't know colleagues, uh, our laboratory and research is team in Saskatoon, I, uh, Saskatchewan. Just so a we tremendous are group in of the people, middle and, of the Canadian uh, here they prairies, are shown this summer. And uh, we still have snow on the day of here. honey extraction. But, uh, spring and is so, uh, on its way. I'm certainly fortunate. Uh, to belong so here's to a brief team. outline of today's talk. And for I'll those of you that don't know, uh, our European laboratory is located disease. in Saskatoon, then I will touch on so our research are regarding the blueberry pollination middle of the and Canadian EFB. prairies. Specifically, and, uh, we still have the snow on the ground pathogen here, and but, environmental uh, factors which on predispose way. colonies to this disease. So here's then a brief outline of about today's our talk. ongoing I'll be surveillance by for this disease in your 2021 bird disease, and then there'll be time for then questions. I will touch on our research regarding so to begin with pollination European and fowl EFB. Specifically, this is a bacterial disease of pathogen brood and environmental and it's factors caused which by the bacterium Melissococcus plutonius. Then I will speak. This is about a non-spore-forming bacteria, bacteria for this disease, although it is in resistant. And then there'll be desiccation or drying and can survive in equipment. So to begin with, European fowl This bacteria brood. causes a disease. This is a bacterial disease of honey larvae brood and open and brood. It's caused by the bacterium. Uh, so similar to American plutonius. fowl brood, it uh, causes a non-spore forming bacteria. Although it is contrast resistant to, brood, to European desiccation or drying and can survive in equipment. And some colonies can spontaneously. This bacteria causes a disease primarily affecting and one of the larvae hallmark and clinical open brood. signs of EFB uh, so similar is to a American spotty brood, brood pattern. It uh, causes here. disease in brood, but in contrast to American EFB fowl brood, is typically brood a typically disease of the early spring, the although and it some can occur at other times of the year. From EFB. And so in early spring, and one of the hallmark have, clinical signs uh, colonies of that EFB are filled is with old spotted bees pattern as and, shown here. Uh, these colonies are stimulated to rear brood. EFB is typically in response to a disease the first pollen in early the spring, although so it can occur in Saskatchewan at other times of the year. Pollen. And, and so, so just in early coming out spring, of winter, this queen have, may uh, start colonies that eggs are filled in response to the pollen old in the environment. Bees. And all of a sudden, the and colony will have uh, these colonies rapidly are stimulated to rear brood in response to However, the first pollen in the environment. Because the uh, workers so in the colony are in Saskatchewan, winter will low pollen. There may be a shortage and so of nursing just coming out of winter, this to look queen after may start to this lay eggs in response to the pollen in the environment. Larvae. And all of a sudden, the and colony so will have in this situation, we rapidly have an imbalance of where we have 
have a high However, crude to nursing B ratio. Yeah, uh, workers in the colony and are primarily they winter workers. Inadequate supply there may of be a shortage of nursing bees in the in colony inadequate to look after and predispose this the rapidly colony expanding to population of larvae. European fall bird and disease. so, in this situation, we can have an imbalance. And the classic where we signs of this disease are shown here, to nursing where, bee ratio. as I mentioned, there may be a spotty and this brood pattern. Inadequate supply brown, of nursing bees larva can result there may in inadequate brood care scale and predisposed rubbery the scale at the bottom of the brood cell. In some cases, the larvae appear deflated or twisted. And the classic signs of this disease are here are here. these clinical Where, signs. As I mentioned, there may be a spotty brood here, pattern. And so we there have brown as well as larvae. larvae show prominent there may be a scale, uh, also, rubbery scale at the bottom of the brood said, cell. Twisted or in some cases, colored, the larvae and in some appear cases deflated a scale. or twisted. In order to and confirm diagnosis, these clinical signs, uh, there are a couple of methods. Uh, here, uh, one method so would have, be to use um, as well a high side test. Show prominent uh, there are some immunologic uh, also based, uh, snap tests, as I said, be twisted or be used discolored to and in provide some cases a rapid a rubbery scale field diagnosis of the disease. In order to However, in confirm our lab, diagnosis, we typically focus on bacterial uh, culture because methods. we uh, one method are interested in collecting strains of this bacteria test. for our research. Uh, there are some immunologic so based uh, what we uh, recommend snap tests for our research and is used swabbing an affected larva in its brood cell field diagnosis and of then the we take that swab and plate it on however in our media, lab we typically and focus incubate on that bacterial culture and anaerobic conditions. We are resulting in, in collecting strains of this bacteria for small white shiny colonies so typically what we recommend Britannia. for our research and when we look under the microscope at these affected larvae in its we brood see these characteristic and then we gram take that positive swab and plate it on short chain media of and lancelate that or plate lance under anaerobic cockeye, conditions consistent with resulting in growth Britannia. of these small white shiny colonies in terms of most and prevention of this disease. And when we look, as I mentioned, in some cases, colonies can spontaneously is characteristic so brown as positive, the season progresses, short chains uh, of lancelate or lance population of nursing bees consistent with they can potentially offer better brood care and uh, in terms of this treatment disease. and prevention of this disease, as well, the beekeeper can as I mentioned help in some cases by providing costly recover to so supplement as the season progresses the and uh, the colony, however, develops spontaneous an recovery of nursing recovery bees, does not always occur, especially they in severe can cases. potentially offer and better so brood care. The and beekeeper may uh, need to apply some additional uh, management disease. techniques. And so, as this well, the beekeeper can sometimes help feeding this along in the early by spring providing when there are limited nutritional resources in the environment population in the colony. The beekeeper might also choose to re however, in order spontaneous to recover does, more hygienic recovery behavior with her, especially in severe cases, as well, regular so replacement of brood frames can may help need to apply some additional management techniques. Survive and in so this could include supplemental in some cases in the early the spring. Might when there are limited to, uh, nutritional resources the colony in the environment, new equipment, and the beekeeper might also choose to requeen uh, in order to burn encourage the, uh, more hygienic behavior within that frames. colony. As well, regular and then of brood commonly frames can help uh, in North America. Oxytetracycline survive may be in used for control. In some of cases, this a beekeeper and so the beekeeper might, choose might already to, uh, be using shake the colony onto new equipment of an, and metaphylaxis either for American child or uh, uh, burn. <clears> and this the, can uh, also be effective against brood frames. European foul brood. However, and it's important commonly, to mention uh, in that North America, oxytetracycline time may be after used applying for control of this disease. Colony before so the beekeeper be might already be using colony. oxytetracycline as part of an, a metaphylaxis for American fowl bloom. <clears throat> so now I'll speak uh, a little bit about this can also be our effective against European fowl bloom. European fowl European fowl bloom. However, it's important to mention that there the is host a sixth pathogen and environmental factors, factors which predispose applying to uh, oxytetracycline to a colony before honey can be. So here's a map of Canada. 
and uh, we produce uh, blueberries. Mm. So now on both I'll speak West a little bit about the East our Coast research on blueberry pollination. It is uh, high bush blueberries in British Columbia, and specifically, and then, as uh, I mentioned, we'll touch on the host pathogen and Canada. environmental factors, which predispose. And honeybees to are incredibly important for production of Canada's blueberries. So here's a map of we Canada, are, uh, the second and, largest uh, exporter of blueberries in the world. Produce, uh, and honeybees contribute on both to the west coast and the, the value coast of, of Canada. Our Typically, blueberry crops it through their is uh, high bush blueberries in British Columbia. And these pollination and then, services uh, are valued at 235 million Canada dollars per year. And honeybees are incredibly important. So honeybees are incredibly crop. important we to blueberries. Uh, the second and, largest uh, exporter of blueberries in the world. Certainly and honeybees contribute 90% of the value of our blueberry But despite this mutually services, beneficial relationship, and these pollination services are increasing valued at 235 million that honeybee colonies per pollinating year. blueberries may be so honeybees are disease. incredibly important and to blueberries so and uh, our lab currently has growers funding are from certainly the British Columbia Blueberry Council, Project Apis M and Costco Canada. But despite to investigate this mutually what beneficial the relationship there has been increasing concern foul brood disease that honeybee colony during blueberry blueberries may be predisposed and as we to know, disease. European fowl so can be an extremely our lab costly currently disease has funding to the from the in British terms Columbia of blueberry council costs, project APSM, as well and Costco as Canada increased to investigate and strength what of the colony the later in the season. And it was European estimated that could be uh, in Alberta, Canada. The cost of European and as we fowl know, disease is approximately European fowl brood can be an extremely costly disease to the bee per colony in terms of so management this can costs certainly have a significant as well economic as impact decreased on honey production bee. and strength of the colony later in the season. So and what it was are estimated some of the potential predisposing in Alberta factors to Canada, European fowl brood during the cost blueberry of pollination. European fowl brood disease. Well, is as I mentioned, there's host factors, factors 600 environmental factors, Canadian dollars per colony. Factors. So uh, this can certainly so have host factors a could include impact <clears throat> things about the bees themselves, which might predispose them to disease. So what and one are that some of the potential predisposing nursing factors to European size. fowl brood during blue So pollination. a decreased number of nursing bees. Well, as I mentioned, there's spring, host factors, <clears throat> environmental uh, factors, typically and coinciding with blueberry pollination could predispose so host factors could to disease include through their weak things about strength. the bees themselves which might predispose them as to well disease. blueberry pollen and one example that potential that environmental factor was that nursing bee population to size blueberry pollination so a decreased blueberry number pollen of nursing bees has shown to early potentially spring. have a higher ph mm. and uh, perhaps which, uh, a different coinciding profile with pollination which may could predispose these inadequate for disease the through the their weak colony strain crop as well, blueberry as well, pollen blueberries is a potential environmental factor with fungicide that may predispose in order to, to control disease. disease. Blueberry and fungicides have blueberry been pollen has been shown in, in to potentially have a higher pH and could be and a, perhaps a potential a different nutritional profile, disease. which may be in as well. There's various for pathogen the factors is foraging on that crop. For example, Melissa coccus plutonius has been as shown well. To blueberries have are both commonly sprayed with fungicides, avirulent or non-pathogenic strains, and fungicides have as well as highly virulent strains of cause high mortality. And, could be a and so there's concern that perhaps disease. colonies pollinating blueberries. May as well, be there's various pathogen to factors, more highly virulent strains. For of this example, Mosaicacus plutonius has been shown to have disease. both uh, avirulent so or non-pathogenic strains, as well as highly virulent strains, which the cause first high mortality. Factor that I'll discuss. And so there's is concern the that perhaps fungicides colonies pollinating blueberries may be disease. exposed to more highly virulent so strains in order of this to bacteria investigate in this question we of this developed a laboratory model of european so our lab is interested in which investigating we use in our research. factors and so the in first this model we are that able I'll to discuss is the potential larvae for fungus with melissa in the lab this disease. and monitor their survival 
And, and so, so in order these to photos here show investigate this an question, example of we this model. Developed so on the top, we have a laboratory larva of European fowl root, nice and which healthy. we use and in on our the research. bottom. We have an age so matched in this larva, model, we are able to is much smaller larvae as well with as with discolored colored and in the lab consistent and monitor with their European survival fowl disease. And so these photos here and show in order to confirm that our laboratory in so on the top we have a control we larva, examine these larva nice and histologically healthy. and on the, the bottom we have and so here's a microscopic section of this is control much larva smaller as well as and the discolored and deflated consistent with and you can European see that the mid gut disease. contains a small amount and of in order food to material. confirm that our laboratory in fact in contrast was successful we this examine the section larva of the infected larva histologically under shows the a mid gut, so which is a microscopic filled section with a large amount of larva blue material with the head and the mid and gut. If we look shown here at higher magnification, and you can see that the mid gut contains a small filled amount with of chains food material of gram positive cocci. In contrast, consistent with this microscopic section of the infected larva that our shows a mid gut, which is filled with a large so using this of laboratory blue material, model of European and fowl if we disease, look we then went and had a tested gut we can see that the exposure mid gut is filled on with survival chains from this of gram positive cocci. In particular, we chose two fungicides which are commonly used in confirming that our infection was captain and Kenja. And we use so using the formulated this model of, of European fungicides. We then went ahead and, we and exposed tested the larva the at of fungicide field relevant concentrations on survival, which this reflect disease. the actual. In particular, we chose two fungicides, fungicides which are commonly used fields. in blueberry production. And so this work was and performed by Dr. Jenna And we Tebow. used the formulated and here's a product graph demonstrating her of results. these fungicides. So on the y-axis, we, we have exposed the larva of the larva field relevant concentrations. And on the x-axis, we have a number of bacteria the at the larva spray application with. of these fungicides. And the different colored fields. bars represent the different. And so this work was for, performed by groups. Dr. Jenna. Tebow. So the gray bars and represent here's a graph the demonstrating larva. the results. The so blue bars on the y-axis have exposed percent to the survival of the captain. larva. The orange and bars on the x-axis have number of bacteria Kenja, that the which larva was, uh, were infected in this with. Experiment. And, and then the different the colored blue bars and orange represent bars represent the, the larvae which were exposed to captain and Kenja. In so the gray bars represent relevant the control larva. The blue bars so represent the larva when exposed we to the fungicide do not infect captain, the larva the with orange any bars bacteria, the so zero colony forming units, Kenja, which we was, see uh, excellent survival experiment. of both the and then the blue and, and orange bars side represent the larvae the larva. which were so exposed to bars captain and Kenja in uh, on average around 90% concentrations and the larva you know so this larva here, when we nice do not infect the larva when we with infect any the larva with so zero colony bacteria units, as expected we see, we see excellent survival of both the in survival and of both the pesticide and fungicide exposed, exposed larva so these bars so are the control larva on average of 50 90 bacteria survived on average about the larva you know resemble uh, this larva here which is 30 percent However, interestingly, when we infect the larva with there was 50 a significant bacteria, increase as expected, in survival, we see a sharp the decline larva in survival infected with of bacteria both control and fungus to fungus larva. So the larva, so the control larva, infected with 50 Kenja bacteria, survived, survived approximately 33%. Uh, more 30 than the control larva. However, interestingly, uh, and the larva that were exposed to a significant combination of captain in survival, Kenja, they had approximately the, the same larva which were infected with bacteria larva. and exposed so to So this fungicides. data would suggest the fungicide so exposure the larva is actually captain or Kenja against survived uh, approximately death 30 from European fowl disease. More and so this could then potentially the suggest that uh, there are uh, and the larva that were exposed to a combination of, of the fungus and Kenja, they on had approximately the same survival. As but the uh, certainly larva. we'll need to investigate this further. So this data would suggest the fungicide exposure and, uh, is we actually will be testing additional fungicides against and their combinations death from European this, fowl this disease. Summer. 
And so this could potentially suggest that uh, there so the are next step, direct bacteria predisposing factor I'd like to the discuss is on the potential the effect of blueberry pollen. But uh, certainly we'll need to investigate this uh, further. And uh, we will so in order to answer additional this fungicides question, and their we needed a colony this, or within hive model of European foul brood. And so, so the next field step, model of predisposing EFE factor I'd was like developed to by Dr. Is Ivana the potential effect of and blueberry what she did is on in development of European larva brood. within a colony with Melissa Caucus. So in order to answer this question, and so we here we did have a colony or group, within hive model which shows larva that are nice and healthy in their brood cell. And so and this field model of around day DFE nine was developed by Dr. Ivana Kosi. And here and uh, is what her she did group, is in where fact the larva are brown larva and within inflated and with often the brood cells are empty because the colony and has so removed here we have the control larva. group which shows larva and that Ivana are nice confirmed and healthy that her in their brood cell was and effective. They are capped again by day nine as a microscopic exam of these larva. And here and so is here her is infected group microscopic where the larva the are brown larva and deflated a mid -gut and often the brood cells are empty because pollen the pollen and food material has removed these. And here we larva. have her infected larva. Which and Ivana confirmed that her field model was effective bacteria, again by confirming, confirming that her a microscopic exam of these larva. And, and so, so using this field is, uh, model, microscopic of section European of the fall control brood, larva, Ivana was able to test the hypothesis with that blueberry pollen, pollen and food material. And here we have TFB. her infected larva. So within her experimental colonies, she filled had two with compartments. And in one compartment, the larva were given a frame of bee bread. And so using this field was model collected from of European blueberry fall pollination, brood, Ivana was able and to test in the, the other compartment that blueberry pollen provided a frame of bee bread, which TFB. was collected from so Northern within her experimental and contains she had two compartments pollen. and uh, in so one far compartment from the larva were given a frame of bee bread that uh, was collected and so using from this pollination and infection model in she other compared the she effect provided the a frame of bee bread pollen diet was on survival collected from, from northern Saskatchewan and contained poly so in this pollen. graph here we so have far away from mm, any percent survival on the y-axis and on and so the using axis, this we have uh, concentration or infection model, of she compared the that effect was of the two pollen diets. The different on colored bars represent the food. different diets. And so, the so yellow in this bars graph here, we have floral <clears throat> percent survival uh, fed on larva on the y-axis. The blue bars are the larva and that were on blue x-axis. We have concentration. And so what or we see is that. When that the larva are not given any bacteria, there's excellent. The different colored bars represent both the different polyfloral diets. and blueberry. So the yellow bars diet. are the polyfloral so, uh, in excess of eighty percent uh, larva, survival and then the blue groups. bars are the larva. When the larva are administered five thousand bacteria, as expected, we see. And so what a we see is that when the larva are not given any bacteria, but there is no difference between survival the two pollen both diets. Polyfloral and then and when we give the diet, larva very high so, doses of bacteria, uh, in excess so of 45,000 bacteria groups. Again, when we the see larva a are in survival, 5,000 bacteria as larva. Expected, we see However, a decrease in survival larva that are given the blueberry pollen 40% survives, but there is no difference compared to the, the larva that were diet. the polyfloral pollen. And then when we give the so this larva data very high doses of bacteria, so at very high doses, bacteria, the again, we see a decrease in survival of both infected larva. Mortality However, the larvae disease. that are given the blueberry pollen survive significantly less compared to the so larva lastly, I'll speak a little bit about virulence of Melissa. So this data would suggest how this got at very high infectious doses the blueberry pollen diet may predispose oh, to have a mortality from here. European foul brood disease. Sorry about that. 
so this work was performed. So lastly, I'll again speak a little Dr. bit Jenna about virulence of And uh, she collected a and how this could predispose to European Melissococcus plutonius from around Canada and the United oh, States. And perhaps I have. And uh, she infected here. larva in the lab with these different isolates. Sorry about that. And compared. Uh, so their this survival. work was performed again so by in Dr. this graph. We have uh, and uh, she collected a number Sorry. of isolates. And of on the x-axis, we have different strains around of Canada and the United States, States, which were collected and she from infected larva in the lab in with these different isolates. And compared and so on their the survival uh, y-axis. So here we can in this see graph, we have had uh, percent survival, larval so survival on the y-axis survival. Sorry. But and among the different the axis, we have isolates, different strains of, of you can see that larval survival is variable. From so some isolates have almost 100 percent survival, suggesting that these isolates and so are almost on the virulent uh, y-axis here, and we can other see isolates that the are highly virulent survival, and have so in excess uh, of 90 percent survival. Of but among larva. the different uh, isolates, the color of, of the bar reflects you can whether see these that larval were survival. Is from variable. blueberry pollinating so colonies, some isolates or have almost that were 100 percent survival, suggesting yellow. that these isolates and are so we can see that virulent in both and both other types isolates of are highly uh, pollinated so and have blueberry or non blueberry pollinating colonies. We have a mixture of, of strains. Larva. Um, so we can see high color of the bar reflects whether these isolates and it does were not appear that blueberry pollinating, pollinating colonies are more likely that were not to have highly virulent strains yellow compared to and so we can see that in both both types of and so uh, we're colonies, interested so in understanding what the reasons we have are a mixture of this strains. variation um, so in we can see highly virulent of the bacteria or virulent strains and so and it we does not appear that assuming this further using whole genome are more likely to have so we highly have virulent funding strains from the Canadian Bee Research Fund and the Canadian colonies. Honey Council to perform and so we're interested in understanding what the reasons are and for in particular this we will in be looking for uh, the, the bacteria of antimicrobial and so we will be as well as further using whole genome sequencing the genome so we have organism. funding from the canadian bee research so as i mentioned oxygen cycling is commonly used for perform sequencing on so these different isolates of most because of this widespread antimicrobial and in particular, this we will be looking may provide for the presence pressure of for antimicrobial the resistance to genes acquire as well as virulence factors within as the well of uh, this other researchers have so as I mentioned the presence cycling of a number of virulence for control of EFE in the genome and so of Mosococcus plutonius because in of particular this antimicrobial there is use a, this virulence factor provide known as pressure for the bacteria, a, which has been shown to antimicrobial be associated genes. with highly virulent as well. Of this uh, other and researchers so have identified in the identifying of a number of virulence presence of this toxin in the and genome other virulence of factors, plutonius. which may be in particular to there some is of a these, uh, strain virulence that factor cause known as Melissa toxin A which has been shown to be So I will just summarize our research thus far. And so we are interested in identifying so the thus presence far we've of this demonstrated that some and other virulence factors might actually be which may be contributing against European to some disease of during uh, strains that cause high larval uh, But mortality. certainly this uh, requires further research. So I As will well, just summarize our research in some situations very pollen may actually predispose larvae to so mortality. Thus from far European we've demonstrated that some but fungus this was might only actually seen at very high against European fallbrood disease during blueberry pollination. As well, we've shown uh, certainly that this the virulence of Mosococcus plutonius is variable. As well, and that we've shown that blueberries in some situations, are not more likely blueberry pollen to have actually virulent predispose compared to larvae that to are not mortality from European foul brood. But typically, this was only and seen in summer 2021, we will be investigating the, the effect of nursing bees on development as well of we've this shown that the virulence of Mosaicus colonies is variable 
and that colonies pollinating blueberries are not more likely to have highly virulent. And the ultimate goal of our research colonies is to ensure blueberries. that blueberry fields will not pose a health and risk. And in summer 2021, we will be investigating so we feel that the by identifying nursing species factors on development of during blueberry pollination. Colony, this will empower Dr. Colby's colony model to better of manage the European factors and protect the health of their colonies in the future. And the ultimate goal of our research is to so ensure lastly, that I'd like to blueberry fields touch on our ongoing surveillance for European to foul brood. And so we feel that by identifying the near area factors may to be able to during blueberry pollination. This will empower beekeepers. So we are to better interested in collecting strains of Melissa Cox and to protect the health of their colonies from any in the type of colony, whether that be a blueberry so pollinating lastly, colony. Lastly, I'd like to or touch on our ongoing colony, regardless for European regardless of and uh, how the history of that colony is in your if area. You suspect may European be able to participate. Then I would encourage you to get in touch. So we with are your state interested in collecting strains and of uh, Plutonius potentially from we any can type arrange of for colony, whether that submission be a blueberry of samples pollinating colony from or the affected colony to colony. our lab. Um, regardless and so of, in particular, uh, we have a relationship colony. with if you Alyssa Piccolomini, who is the state Then I would encourage you to in get Montana. in touch with your and state And provided her with some swabs. And, uh, and so if potentially uh, she can arrange a colony, for she will be swabbing submission some of, those of samples from and sending the affected colony to, to our Canada lab for bacterial culture. And so culture. in particular, we have and a relationship of these with strains. Alyssa Piccolomini, so who is we the are state certain this, in Montana uh, will help us to characterize the different provided strains her with some uh, across North and America so if, and uh, help us to learn in a colony, about uh, uh, their different some of those larvae and sending them to us in Canada Europe. for bacterial so, culture. Uh, and characterization if you are a of Montana strains. beekeeper, then I would encourage so, you to we are get in touch with Alyssa mm, if you suspect uh, will help us to in characterize the different strains and uh, across otherwise uh, North America. If you're not and in help Montana, us you to can learn get a hold of me about and I uh, will their different attributes, provide you with including my contact information, antimicrobial resistance, and virulence. So. Uh, if so with that, I'd like to acknowledge then I would encourage the funding to get in touch with Alyssa if you suspect possible EFB in your I'd operation. Like to acknowledge and my otherwise, lab uh, for being, if you're not in Montana, uh, you can certainly group. get a hold of me. I'd and like to I will thank provide Alyssa you with my contact Lamini information for her collaboration. And I'd like to thank uh, the Western Apicultural Society. Of so North with America that, I'd like to acknowledge to the as well funding, as Jaylene, Mary, Cameron, our research and Med Hat for I'd like their to hard work acknowledge in this conference my together. lab. And for I'd like to thank all of you for your attention. Group. I'd like to Here is thank my contact Alyssa information Piccolini if you would like her collaboration. To and I'd and like to thank, I'm happy to take uh, any the Western Apicultural Society of North America for inviting me to speak today as well as Jaylene, Jerry, Cameron, and Medhat for their hard work in putting this conference together. And I'd like to thank all of you for your attention. Here is my contact information if you would like to get a hold of me. And I'm happy to take any questions at this time.